You may not know this, but Bigtable is utilized by many online services that you use every day. If you want to learn how, you've come to the right place. My name is Bora. I'm from the product team at Cloud Bigtable. From movie recommendations to fraud alerts, today users expect personalized experiences that can only be delivered through machine learning. And for many modern applications, even milliseconds make a difference. Hence, it's not uncommon for machine learning models to have no more than 100 milliseconds end-to-end -to, -end to deliver results in order to maintain acceptable total load times. There are many ways to train and serve machine learning models. Google offers a large number of pre-trained models for tasks like speech-to-text, computer vision, translation, even package solutions like virtual agents, as well as a fully managed machine learning platform called Vertex AI. In this session, we'll focus particularly on custom models developed using Apache Spark on Cloud Dataproc, an open source framework that is very popular among data science community. Let's take a brief look at the databases and how they can help us with serving machine learning workloads at scale with low latency. Bigtable is Google's fully managed, scalable, NoSQL database service for large analytical and operational workloads. Bigtable is extremely good at key value lookups and range queries, which makes it a great fit for machine learning. It can store the data in columns, as well as binary formats like protobufs or JSON documents, providing a lot of flexibility for handling structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. Bigtable is trusted by Internet's best-known brands, serving billions of users daily, including Google's own products like Gmail, Search, YouTube, Google Maps, Google Analytics, and Google Pay. It manages over 10 exabytes of data, serving more than 5 billion queries per second at single-digit millisecond latencies. BigQuery is Google's serverless enterprise data warehouse that can analyze data from various storage packets, including Bigtable. Bigtable doesn't support operations like joins out of the box, nor does it provide a SQL interface, which is commonly used by analysts and data scientists, which makes its integration with BigQuery extremely valuable for such users. BigQuery storage compute separation allows it to query and federate data from various sources, intelligently moving relevant data to support the necessary query capabilities. Through this integration, BigQuery allows running SQL queries against Bigtable, pushing down queries seamlessly to Bigtable's super-fast engine and allowing combination of data from multiple sources, including relational databases like Spanner and Cloud SQL, archival data from Google Cloud Storage, and of course, data stored in BigQuery itself. To use Bigtable through BigQuery, you first need to define the metadata for the columns of your table, and then register your table as a BigQuery external table using our command line utility. Once tables are added, they're not only queryable through BigQuery, but can also be accessed by tools that utilize BigQuery client libraries and ODBC JDBC drivers, like Apache Spark, Looker, Data Studio, and many other data science, data visualization, and BI tools. Let's take a look at a quick demo. Here you can see a table showing synthetic transaction data for a user in Bigtable. Since Bigtable is a NoSQL database, you can see that certain fields like user's birth date doesn't repeat, as it would in a flat table. This table contains transaction time, location, amount, and items, and so on. Let's make it accessible through BigQuery. Once the table appears in BigQuery, I can use SQL to query or build views on top of it like any other table. In this case, I create a view. Below you can see the data in tabular format. And here's our schema. Now that the data appears in BigQuery as an external table, let's see if we can build a dashboard. Here is a Google Data Studio dashboard that is connected to this data source. I can see at what merchants this particular user is spending their money, where the merchants are geographically, and how the spend is changing over time. All these charts rely on aggregate queries generated by the dashboard tool accessing Bigtable through BigQuery. I also put a filter so we can type in a different user ID. Let's look at how user 2 is doing. With its consistent high performance for point lookups and range scans, linear scalability, and five nines of availability, Bigtable allows you to deliver stellar machine learning driven user experiences cost effectively with peace of mind whether you're a growing startup or a large enterprise dealing with peak traffic of a Cyber Monday week. 
Two common reasons customers prefer Bigtable are, one, it is accessible through open source APIs like your Apache HBase, and two, because it can support various applications through a single copy of the data. So the same table can serve an ML model, support a user interface in a mobile application, or a business dashboard. Bigtable is best suited for storing and serving batch predictions for slowly changing attributes, embedding store real-time predictions, most suitable for recommendation semantic text, image, and audio search applications, or features for real-time predictions using any general purpose model. Note that for the last two bullet points, there also exist package solutions like Vertex AI's matching engine and Vertex AI feature store that could be used depending on your needs. Let's look into what high-level architectures might look like for each case. The first step for training a machine learning model involves combining different data sources and preparing the data where BigQuery and Dataproc Spark come in handy. Once we train the model, there are multiple artifacts. First, we can store the pre-computed predictions. For example, in gaming, depending on user's level, the progress in the game, character build, etc., certain offers might have a higher chance of conversion. These key points in user journey and associated automated responses could simply be enumerated by the machine learning model and stored in Bigtable to simplify the architecture and improve overall performance by reducing cross-component communication overhead. We can also export some byproducts called embeddings. Embeddings can be described as simplified representation of complex relationships to quickly identify similarities and differences. For example, if you look at a product catalog, depending on our end goal, we can classify them in very narrow categories or very broad categories like dresses, blouses, trousers, hats, etc. And sometimes in hierarchies like breaking down hats into subcategories like fedoras and newsboard caps. Embeddings do the similarity inference through machine learning in a more abstract way. They could be based on computer vision algorithms or textual product descriptions and attributes, even cross-purchasing patterns, social media reactions, and so on, which makes them very suitable for a wide variety of similarity search applications from product recommendations to document search. Last but not least, we can publish the model itself and store the features it needs to function. A feature in this context refers to a metric that could serve as an input to a machine learning model. For example, for churn prediction use case, date since last login could be a good metric. For e-commerce fraud detection, shipping address and card owner's residential address would be two relevant features. Features could result from the analysis of text, for example, what percentage of an email address is seemingly random characters and numbers, or can be aggregates, such as number of credit cards user added as payment methods in the last hour. Some could also be real-time, for example, the merchant name, location, and charge amount for the transaction being evaluated for fraud. As we discussed earlier, batch predictions are fast and allow for a simpler architecture, but they serve pre-calculated results, and not everything can be anticipated ahead of time. Embeddings offer more flexibility with a similar architectural simplicity as ML models discover abstract relationships between concepts so they can adapt to handle, for example, recommendations for new products the model has never seen before. With this architecture, cost versus performance could be optimized using methods like locality-sensitive hashing. Larger the hash, higher the cost and latency, but better the accuracy. Often the queries happen in two stages. One, fast hash search to identify candidates, which, for example, could help you hone in from billions of records to thousands of candidates, like narrowing down from a large retail catalog to a category like Fedora's, as we discussed earlier. Two, an exact search to rank those candidates from the most similar to least using a function like cosine similarity. While deploying the model to production is the most complex of all options, it's also the most flexible. There could be many variations of this. We'll go through an example very shortly that will use pups up to receive events, join the event data with features in Bigtable, and deliver a prediction using a streaming cloud data flow pipeline. This is the so-called Lambda architecture. In this case, Bigtable plays a major role as a data source in both the fast serving layer as well as the batch compute layer, thanks to its scalability, performance, flexibility, and cost profile. It combines the speed of hot data backends and flexibility of data lakes in one product. Let's use a Jupyter notebook on our data prop cluster running Apache HBase. Here I'm connected to Bigtable through BigQuery again and issuing a SQL query. 
Note that I also brought in another table that contains information about which transactions have been historically marked as fraudulent. This will be the field we'll try to predict with our machine learning model, but it also demonstrates the federation capability, in this case using joins. The output shows a new field, but join results in null values for transactions that weren't fraudulent. We will clean up this data and build our features using a Spark data frame. Here, in addition to cleaning the data, we're also creating what we consider to be indicators of fraud, like recent transactions and their locations, so we can compare them to users' typical behavior and identify anomalies. Note that the fraud detection models are quite complicated and could have hundreds of such features. Our goal here is to demonstrate the end-to-end -end flow, so our model will be extremely simple. Now that we have our features, we'll write the relevant ones back to Bigtable for future fast retrieval train our model, and publish the Vertex AI. Such batch feature building is most suitable for slowly changing attributes that don't need to be computed in real time. We will, however, incorporate real-time input into our model in the next steps, which are already in our historical transactions table for training purposes. Now that our model is ready, Let's hook up the pieces needed for the communication between the components. I created two pops up topics. Activity will receive the transactions while responses where fraud detection results will be written. The communication between pops up the table and the model is through the streaming data workshop. First, we read from the activity topic in pops up, then join the features stored in the table, which is sent to the machine learning model, output of which is written to the response pops up topic. Let's simulate some traffic and see it end to end. On the left hand side, I'll create a process that subscribes to the response queue. Any new messages will automatically appear here. On the right, I pre populated our queue with some activity for which the responses should start pouring in once I subscribe. Once the queue is empty, let's insert two suspicious looking transactions. I can see on the left that the card is getting the client for these two transactions. Mission accomplished. This was a quick overview of how you can use Bigtable for machine learning. I hope you enjoyed the session and will consider Bigtable for your next project. You can learn more about Bigtable and how our customers are using it for machine learning in our blog or on YouTube where you can find recordings of several conference talks delivered by Bigtable customers. Thanks for your time.